Hey everyone, so this week you were able to access a download called Essential Oils to Avoid and that came about because you guys had questions about different essential oils and some of them are simply not safe to use and I feel like you need to know this information, people need to know this information, it's very important so if you have received it make sure that you share it with anyone else that you think needs to know this information. Um, it is super important. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you. Um, and I'm going to show you and walk you through this download. Um, all right, so let me go ahead and do that. And if you have any questions, go ahead and post those. So we are going to go over this. Um, you can find this on my website at leahjacobson.com slash EOs to avoid. Again, I wanted this readily available for everyone to access so that you can use essential oils safely. All right, um, give me one second. I wanted to able to see you guys or have you guys see me give me one second here we go no here we don't go let's try this one all right so you guys can see I am here live all right so the essential oils to avoid the following essential oils are potentially carcinogenic neurotoxic and or there's another reason that it's not safe for people to use but those are the two main reasons why I will flag an essential oil is if it's potentially carcinogenic or neurotoxic. That means do not only not ingest, but don't apply to your skin and also do not inhale. All right. So I did include all of the botanical names here for you so that if you are confused as to what it, essential oil that I'm talking about, you can see that information here clearly. Let me go ahead and zoom in even more to make sure that if you are watching from a small phone that you can actually see all of the information. And again, you can download, print this out, save it on your phone and reference it. We have allspice, we have anise and anise star. We have aborvite, which also goes by thuja and also goes by red western cedar. Now, it's always important to check the botanical name that I have listed here so that you can be sure that the ones you currently have in your collection, including blends. So if you have a blend that has this in here, make sure you avoid using the blend. Just throw it right away. It's just not worth the risk, but verify it with the botanical name. We have Madagascan basil as well as pungent basil. We have the specific chemotype disophenol of buchu, which is definitely not a common essential oil, as well as the pulagone chemotype of buchu. We have brown camphor listed here. Yellow camphor is actually not that great either, but you could get away with using it if you follow its topical max. Um, I actually have to look that up again because I feel like I discourage people from using yellow camphor as well. White camphor is fine. Um, let me just pause here for a moment because if you check the botanical name, this is the same botanical name that is for yellow camphor and white camphor as well as brown camphor. So if you see this listed on your bottle, you might wonder which one that you have. So the only way to tell is by looking up the GCMS report and seeing what the constituents are. And there is a way to tell by that alone, unless the company that you are purchasing camphor from tells you what chemotype that it is. Um, hopefully they're providing you that information. But going by botanical name alone isn't always going to cut it when there are different types or different chemotypes of an essential oil. So this is something you will actually have to verify by GCMS report. And I think this is really the only one that you can't tell by a chemotype. You really have to look up the, um, the GCMS report. Most of the other ones will have a different botanical name, which indicates a different species that has different safety information, or it has a different chemotype. Like these basils up here 
Um, these have, uh, this is a Madagascan basil and pungent basil, and these are going to be different than the basil that's the linalol chemotype, that is the one that I do recommend. We have chase tree and vitex as well. We have um, Indian dill seed, not to be confused with dill weed, which can be used safely. We have fennel, both bitter and sweet. These are again, all essential oils that you want to avoid. Whole leaf. Now, if you check here back up at the camphor, you will see the same exact botanical name that is for brown camphor and yellow and white as there is for whole leaf. But you will notice here, I've included the chemotype of camphor in here. So it can, a lot of times I tell you, check the botanical name for most cases that will reveal the essential oil you are using and therefore the safety. But in some cases you need to check the chemotype as well. And that distinguishes different essential oils from each other as well. The common name is whole leaf. This is the botanical name. And then this is the specific chemotype as well. Then we have hyssop, laurel leaf, East Indian, as well as Indian mace. We have three different mugworts listed here. Again, check the botanical name, Art Art Artemisia vulgaris, which is for both of these here. However, check the chemotype. We have the camphor or thujone chemotype, and then we have the chrysanthemal chemo, um, acetate chemotype. Then we have great mugwort, which does have a little bit different botanical name here. Mustard, myrtle, nutmeg, and this is a big one. I know a lot of people are surprised by both fennel, which is pretty common in digestive blends, and nutmeg. Now, skipping back to fennel, fennel seed, the spice, the herb is totally safe for you to use. It's wonderful, great for digestive issues. Unfortunately, it is not safe once it's created into an essential oil. Once that plant has been distilled, into an essential oil where the oil soluble constituents have been um, steam distilled out and removed and collected as a as um, an essential oil and the water soluble parts are collected as a hydrosol during steam distillation it alters the chemical composition of fennel so instead of having the whole plant which can have both potentially carcinogenic but oftentimes more anti-carcinogenic constituents once it's distilled over for this particular essential oil and a few others like basil, it actually turns into something that has more risk than benefit. So a lot of companies out there that are pushing fennel for digestive issues, which makes sense to us because we know fennel is great for digestion, but the essential oil, however, has more risk than benefit. So it's something that we don't want to use. In this case, herbs are going to be safer and way more effective for you to use for digestive issues. Nutmeg is another one, especially this time of year, fall and winter, where it's promoted in a lot of blends and dishes. This is something that is potentially carcinogenic. Um, nutmeg specifically actually has a restriction even on the ground spice. Two teaspoons of the ground spice can cause psychotropic effects. So how much more concentrated is the essential oil? About 100 times or more more potent, which means even just two drops of essential oil can have a psychotropic effect. So nutmeg is again one that you really want to avoid unless you want to have a psychotropic effect. All right, so just so you are aware of that. Parsley leaf and parsley seed are both essential oils to avoid. Pennyroyal is one that is typically not even available. Pennyroyal is an essential oil that at least most companies, I, I don't even think that there are distillers that distill this really. Um, I know that you can find it if you look for it, but most distillers understand the danger of this. Therefore, they don't make it available to the bulk suppliers that most companies purchase from. So this is um, another one that is probably not going to come across your path, but it is definitely worth noting because it might be snuck into a blend or two 
probably not intentionally, but simply from the ignorance of the formulators. We have Huon pine and Ponderosa pine. Now, where generally pines are safe, pines, spruces, and firs are amazing. You hear me recommend them for congestion. There are these two types of pine that go by these botanical names, that have these botanical names, and this botanical synonym as well. That is not safe. It is potentially carcinogenic slash neurotoxic. I can't remember exactly what it is about this that flagged it, um, but it is not something that you want to use. Now, these, again, are very hard to find, um, but they may be snuck into a blender too because they are very inexpensive because they're not safe. We have Rivensura bark and leaf going by these botan botanical names here. Not to be to con confused with Rav um, Sera with an I. Um, that is something different and I know it's confusing. We have Dalmatian sage, which is unfortunately the most common sage that you will find in a blend or the most common sage that you will find for sale um, as a single essential oil. It is again, one of those that sound familiar because it's an herb and so we think oh this must be safe i have it as a spice in my cabinet it is not recommended to use it is not going to be safe for you to use there are other alternatives that actually are safe that can be helpful for digestive issues or other things um suganda is another one we have tansy not blue tansy blue tansy is fine it does have a drug interaction um for some people that take medications, but this is tansy. If you check the botanical name, it is not the same as blue tansy. So again, make sure that you are checking the botanical names against any of the essential oils that you have, including blends, to make sure that you are staying safe. Then we have tarragon, and then we have black tea tree. Not the same as the melaleuca officinalis, not the same as your regular tea tree that I recommend all the time for various things. This is black tea tree. So this may be sold as regular tea tree. They may not tell you it's black tea tree, which is why it's super important to check the botanical names of the essential oils that you have. And these are all um, taken from my essential oil safety files book that you can find on my website but I just wanted to make sure that you understood these essential oils are not to be used. And it, you know, honestly, it just dawned on me right now. I think it would be super cool if all of us could go through our single essential oils and our blends and look for these essential oils. And if we find them to throw them away and do not use them. If you are interested in some kind of accountability for this, some kind of uh, I don't know, free challenge where we're going to do this and we're going to document and we're going to look at all our blends and we're going to see what's in them and make sure that these aren't on the list. It's something I just thought of. It might be fun to do as a group. If this is something that interests you, let me know. And that's something that I can put together. But you really could just print out this list and go through all of your essential oils and blends to be sure that you don't have these in your essential oil cabinet because it is not going to be safe for you or your family. If you have any questions, let me know. I do plan on including your questions in a podcast. I want to have a podcast about the essential oils to avoid and read through this list, but I would also like to know what questions you have. I believe I answered the two most common questions, which is, oh my gosh, really? Tansy? Like, I thought that was fine. Or tea tree? Like, you recommend tea tree all the time. I thought that was safe. Um, so hopefully I clarified those common questions for you, but if you have a different question, definitely let me know, and I can address those either here and or on my podcast. All right? Thanks so much for listening. Again, if you don't have this download, I will include it in the comments and share it with people that you know use essential oils so they can be safe too.